coming to the problem so in this we are going to uh, take one case so that is two span continuous beam we are taking and the support conditions are one end to be a fixed end and other end to be a roller end the question is analyze the two span continuous beam shown in the figure by using a slope deflection method and then you are going to draw the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram so this is the question given to us so a is a fixed support b and c span coming to this ab you are having a 40 kN that is a point load and bc you are having a udl of 20 kN per meter so for ab you are having a moment of inertia i and for bc you are having a moment of inertia 2i the span of ab is 4 meters and the span of bc is uh, 6 meters so this is the question now moving to the next step 1 you are going to determine the degree of the freedom so for this beam if you consider a support so theta a is equal to 0 and whereas delta a is also equal to 0 and coming to b support theta b is not equal to 0 and delta b is equal to 0 and whereas coming to c here the rotation is not 0 and as well as the displacement is 0 so by seeing this we can say that the degree of freedom is 2 that is theta b and theta c so in this you are going to find out theta b and theta c as your unknowns and next step you are going to find out the uh, fixed end moments so for this we are going to find out the fixed end moments so now you are going to consider each individual beam that is ab and bc so b and c supports also you are going to assume it as a fixed supports and individually for uh, ab beam and bc beam you are going to find out the fixed end moments so considering here ab span uh, 40 kN meter center point no 2 meters so the span is 4 meters so for this we are going they are going to develop a hogging moment at a and hogging moment at b so at a support you are having anti clockwise direction so as per the sign convention of the slope deflection method it is in anti clockwise direction so it is negative you are having wl by 8 so that is the formula we are going to use for finding out the fixed end moments similarly at b you are having in a positive direction why because it is in clockwise direction at b moment and the formula is same that is wl by 8 why because the load is at the center it is acting and now coming to finding out the fixed end moment for mfab so it is minus wl by 8 as it is in anti negative direction so finding out you are getting minus 20 and similarly mba you are having a positive wl by 8 so here you are getting a plus 20 kN meter similarly for bc span also if you just consider it is having a udl of 20 kN per meter and uh, it is a span of 6 meters so here you are find here also you are having developing a hogging moment at b and c and at b you are having a uh, anti clockwise direction negative so the formula here is wl square by 12 and similarly at c you are having a clockwise direction so it is positive and it is having a wl square by 12 this is a fixed end formula for uh, udl so finding out mfbc minus 60 kN meter and mfcb as uh, plus 60 kN meter so this is how you are going to find out the fixed end moments by making each ab and bc span to be a individual beams which are having a fixed support so you are assuming in that way and coming to the next we are going to use the slope deflection equations so this is the major slope deflection equation mab so mab will be equal to mfab plus 2i by l into 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta by l similarly we are going to write for mba also so this is a slope deflection equation for ba span so since there is no settlement in the problem which we have taken initially so delta will be equal to 0 so now these two equations are reducing into this form that is mab is equal to mfab plus 2a by l into 2 theta a plus theta b similarly mba will be equal to mfba plus 2a by l into 2 theta b plus theta a so these are the slope deflections we are going to use in the further process coming to the next so by using these equations as we know that for the beam what we have considered a support is to be a fixed support therefore theta a will be equal to 
So by substituting this boundary condition here, we are simplifying M A B equation to be minus 20 plus E I into theta B by two. Similar way, you're going to uh, use the MBA equation also, slope reflection equation. So by simplifying, you're going to get MBA will be equal to 20 plus E I into theta. Similar way for BC span and CB span also we are considering and we are arriving with this equations. But here theta B and theta C are unknowns. So here you are going to find these two things. So these are the slope deflection equations by substituting the fixed end moments and the rotations also. Now coming to the next step, here you are going to use the equilibrium equations. So at B joint, you are having uh, the summation of the moment will be equal to zero. So at B, you are having a two members that is BA and BC. So BA plus BC moment will be equal to zero. And similar way, uh, sigma mc equal to zero. So at uh, he, as it is a roller support, there you are not having any moment. So mcb will be equal to zero. So as you are having two unknowns, that is theta b and theta c. So here you are having m uh, two equations. So by using these two equations, you are going to solve the two unknowns. So mba plus mbc will be equal to zero. First we are considering this equation. And we are solving the, the equations. Finally, you arrived with this equation one. So that is in terms of theta b and theta c. Similar way, next equation we have taken that is mc will be equal to zero. That is mcb will be equal to zero. So on simplifying this equation, you are arrived with the equation two. So by solving these one and two equations, you are going to get theta b to be positive. That is 35 by ei. So as per the sign convention, it is a clockwise rotation. And similarly, theta c is minus you're getting. So it is in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so the rotation is in the anti-clockwise direction. So with these two things, you're going to draw the elastic curve in the next part. So coming to the elastic curve, you can see here for the fixed support as we are not having any rotation. So theta a is zero. Whereas coming to b, you're having a positive value. So you're draw, drawing in the clockwise direction. So this is a clockwise rotation. And at C, you're having a negative. So you're drawing in an anti-clockwise direction. So here you can consider the, as we are considering the sign convention, the clockwise rotation to be positive and anti-clockwise rotation to be a negative value. So this is a figure representing the elastic curve. And coming to the next step, by using those uh, rotations, you're going to find the final end moments, okay? So now you're going to substitute the theta b and theta c in the slope deflection equations as we mentioned in the uh, uh, before step. So MAB, you're getting it as minus 2.5 kilonewton meter. MBA is uh, plus 55 kilonewton meter. MBC to be minus 55 and MCB to be a zero. Okay. So as C support is a roller support, you're getting a moment to be a zero. So these are the final end moments, MAB negative, MBA positive, MBC negative, MCB zero. So here you can just check that joint equilibrium condition is satisfying. That is MBA plus MBC. When you're adding, you're getting a zero. So this is an equilibrium condition. So by using this, as you're getting a negative value, so MAB is in the anti-clockwise direction. MBA is positive. So it is in the clockwise direction. MBC in the negative, so it is anti-clockwise direction. MCB is a zero, so it is of zero value. So here you can, uh, this is a free body diagram. So it is negative, so it is an anti-clockwise. Again at B, it is a positive, it is in clockwise. Again at, for BC span, it is negative, so it is in anti-clockwise direction. So at C, it is a zero. So that is why no value has been mentioned. So this is a free body diagram of the final end points. Next, coming to the bending moment diagram. So here we are consider we are uh, drawing uh, uh, individually for uh, AB, and this is a point load of forty kilonewton, and it is having a two point five kilonewton meter negative, so anti clockwise direction, and it is a positive value, so it is in the clockwise direction. Similarly, for BC also you're having a UDL of 20 kilonewton meter. So for that, the moment developed at B is uh, 55 kilonewton meter, which is of anti-clockwise direction negative. And at uh, C, you are having it is a zero value. 
So this is a free body diagram. So by using this, we are going to draw the Benny moment diagram. So for the Benny moment diagram, the sign convention is, so for hogging, this is a hogging moment we consider. So it is a negative. So when we cut a section at this point, so towards your left hand side, if it is an anti-clockwise direction, it is negative. Towards your right hand direction, if it is in the clockwise direction, it is also negative. Similar way, when the arrows are heading towards upwards, so that means when we cut a section at this point, so at the left hand side, when the arrow is in the clockwise direction, it is positive. From the right hand side, when the arrow is in the anti clockwise direction, also it is mentioned as positive. So this is a sagging moment. So these are the two sign conventions you are going to follow for drawing a Benny moment diagram. So here you can see. This 2.5 and 55 are in uh, hogging direction. So these uh, Benny moment is in negative direction. So this is a fixed end moment, right? Final end moment due to this fixity. So due to this uh, point load uh, and the support conditions are uh, uh, reactions. So it is in the free Benny moment diagram. So this is in the uh, sagging moment. So it will be a positive. Similarly, here also due to this external load and uh, the reactions, you're getting a positive Benny moment. And due to this uh, uh, hogging moment, you're, get, you're going to get a negative moment. So let us see now. So due to this point load at the center, you're having a, you're going to have the moment developed at the center is double L by four for a simply supported beam. So it is a 40 kilonewton meter. So it is of triangular and uh, for simply supported, it is a hogging in nature. Therefore, it is a positive. Similar way for this UDL, you are having a WL squared by 8 for a simply supported. So you're getting 90 kilonewton per meter. So as it is a UDL, you are having a parabola and it is also positive in nature. Then afterwards, you're having a 2.5 kilonewton meter at A and 55 kilonewton meter at B and at C, you're having a zero. So you're going to have this negative bending moment down. Negative bending moment here. So you can just see this entire portion and this entire portion, this entire portion and this entire portion. So the this entire portion you can just see is the uh, resultant bending moment diagram. A support, B support and C support. So this portion will be your intersection portion will be your bending moment diagram for this case. Okay. So now coming to the next you have to calculate the reaction. So after calculating the reactions, you can draw the shear force diagram. So same free body diagram I have taken. So just considering this AB support. So moment at A is uh, hogging in nature. So it is uh, minus 2.5 kilonewton meter. So moment about this point is nothing but RB1 into 4 minus this 55 and this minus 40 into 2 is minus 2.5. So from this, you're going to calculate RB1 value as 33.125 kilonewton. So when we add this RA plus RB1, you're going to get the 40 kilonewton. So from this, you're calculated RA. Similar way for BC span also, if you just take moment about C is zero. So now RB2 into six, this minus 55 and minus 20 into six into six by two due to the UDL will be equal to zero. From this, you calculated RB2 as 69.16 kilonewton. So RB2 plus R. RC will be equal to 20 into 6. So from this, you calculated RC as 50.84 kilonewton. So this is how you calculated the reactions of RA, RB1, RB2, and RC. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram by using this. So coming to the shear force diagram. So first, this is a free body diagram, what we have chosen. So from this, you can just take the sign convention. So if you just cut at any portion and if you just take an element, so if the arrows are arrow from this side is in upward and towards the right side, if it is in downward, so that means it is having a positive shear. That means it is like a clockwise. So this is a positive shear. So when we cut a section here at the center point, towards left, if you are having an upward arrow, and towards right, if you are having a downward arrow. So that means it should make a sense of clockwise direction. So then you can call it as a positive shear. So the opposite way, that means when towards your left, you are having a downward and towards your right, you are having a upward. So then it will be a negative. So that means it is in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is a negative shear. So here the bending moment and uh, uh, shear force uh, sign conventions are different. 
So you should follow these sign conventions. So now RA, you are having 6.87. So which is of upward towards the left side, that means it is a positive value. Similarly, RB, when you just cut a section, it is in upward towards the right hand side. So it is a negative value of 33.125 and it is of downward that is a negative direction and similarly rb2 you're having a 69.16 and which is of upward towards your left hand side so it is a positive shear and it is triangularly varying due to the udl and similar way here rc also you're having 50.84 and it is of uh, uh, right hand side upward so it is a negative direction so it is a point, point load, so it is in varying like this and it is a UDL, so it is varying like a linear way. So this is how you're going to draw the shear force diagram. So with this, we completed this problem. So in the next module, we'll discuss the another, uh, another model. So these are the references. Thank you.